It's Europe's leading cruise port, home to Cunard's legendary Queen Mary II, and was the launching point for both the Mayflower and the Titanic. Now that one went well. <laughs> but if you've got a few hours to spare, just what is there to do in Southampton? Well, hello and welcome to episode 58 of Planet Cruise Weekly with myself, Keith, and with this gentleman here, Glenn, although hello. I'm stretching my truth when I call you a gent. That's true, yep. How would you describe yourself, Glenn? Oh, there's words I can't use on this TV that describe me. <laughs> <laughs> and basically, words that my wife would use. Basically, we're both an old couple of sailors who've uh, been in the industry now, what, as we said, 20, 20, 20, 20 years on sea, and another 15 off sea. So uh, we, we kind of like to chat about the industry and give you some, some little tips. And we do. Uh, Today is quite interesting because it's all about Southampton. And if it's going to be a short episode. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you've cruised into or out of the UK, uh, then you will no doubt have visited Southampton, maybe because you follow uh, your local fo football team or maybe just because you went over to the Isle of Wight. For many, it is simply a launching point, like flying out of the UK airport is a means to an end. Um, therefore, sometimes our expectations can be quite low, but are we being unfair? Are we missing out? Uh, we think that Southampton is long overdue a pat on the back, and today we're going to explore this misunderstood and underappreciated city and throw <laughs> the spotlight on some of the ways you can spend your time in this maritime gym. Now, banter aside, in doing this we are going to be realistic and in fact Cunard's Queen Mary 2 spends at least 50% of its year sailing between Southampton and New York and okay let's be honest as much as British crew members like myself and Glenn do hold a, a special part of their heart Southampton is no New York and um, sailing the shadow of the Statue of Liberty of course will always trump sailing into the shadow of Ikea. Oh it can't be Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that place. <laughs> I always get lost. I only go for the meatballs. <laughs> do you? Yeah. So, uh, but that said, there is loads to do and see here. And most people just simply don't realise. So sit back, relax, and we're going to inform you. Okay, so let's look at a little bit of background and the history of the city itself. So just in case you've never been or you lived outside the UK or simply don't do geography, Southampton is located on the south coast of the UK in the county of Hampshire and is only 80 miles from London, hence some of the American cruise companies call Southampton their port for London. Now with a history that includes Roman roots and Viking mythology, uh, one of her most famous residents was a young Jane Austen. And in fact, there's a great Jane Austen trail through the old town tracing her association with the city. In fact, 2017 marks the 200 year anniversary of her death and throughout June to October the city's hosting a festival dedicated to her memory and work. Henry V marched his troops through the West Gate on their way to Agincourt and as we mentioned at the start both the Mayflower and Titanic launched from Southampton. Titanic with 500 residents who were never to return. But surprisingly, Southampton's aviation heritage is just as strong, with it credited to the creation of the term airport and being home to the design of the Spitfire RJ Mitchell, with the iconic planes made and flight taken off for what we now call Southampton Airport. Now, with this in mind, it's unsurprising that one of Southampton's top rated attractions is the Solent Sky Museum, where you can explore the city's connection to the world's most famous fighter plane and actually sit in the cockpits of many of the planes on display. Today, Southampton is mainly known as a cruise hub with Cunard, p Princess, Fred Olsen, Royal Caribbean and Saga all regularly sailing out of there. And there is always a throng of people keen to spot the latest superliner. Now, if you fancy joining them on one of the best viewing spots is the well-named Mayflower Park. No prizes for guessing where it got its name. Okay, so let's start off by keeping things relatively local to Southampton. If you've only got a couple of hours to kill or just fancy taking it easy, then there are plenty of things to do within walking distance of the ship and the city centre. And our top tip here will be to take a walk around the city, which will not only help you hit your suggested 10,000 steps for the day, but also enable you to soak up some of the history and heritage. Because in fact, Southampton has the third longest stretch of medieval walls in the UK, some of which you can even walk. And in fact, the entrance to the medieval town called Bargate is still fully intact. And it's a great sight to see and a great place to walk through. Just before you get to Starbucks on the left. <laughs> and other coffee shops that we might mention. <laughs> it? It's just there. Heritage and culture, there you summed go. up to my right. Now, one of the most fun ways to do this is to participate in Text Quest. After signing up on the website, players receive a text with directions and a clue. Uh, once you reply with the right answer, you get the next clue. You can race against other teams or simply amble around and enjoy the sights of Southampton. Now, as you walk around the city, you'll also notice many 
of the original Tudor buildings that still remain intact. The best of which is the well-named Tudor House and Gardens, which encompasses over 900 years of history on one site. And it's arguably Southampton's most important historical building and has been recently restored with some great new displays, some audio guides and facilities. The best of which is without doubt the reconstructed Tudor and Victorian kitchens, which demonstrate just how far mod cons have come in the 21st century. Now, a nice little heads up is that you can save yourself some money by getting a combined tickets with the Tudor House and the Sea City Museum. This is essentially a Titanic experience and looks at how Southampton played a huge part in the fated ship's history. You can also trace the roots of Southampton back to the early original settlers. Now, art lovers should make a beeline for the City Art Gallery, which is internationally renowned for its permanent collection. Spanning eight centuries, it tells the story of Western art from the Renaissance right through to the present day and includes some great contemporary British artwork. Now, sports fans have several options. Foremost amongst them is to visit St Mary's Stadium, which is home of Southampton Football Club. The Premier League club has an interesting history dating back to 1885. For those that prefer to do something else, you've got abundance of water sport opportunities, paintballing and the Alpine Snow Sports Centre are all close by. Now, for the young at heart or cryptic crossword fans, look no further than Southampton's very own escape room. In a nutshell, it's a little bit like the Crystal Maze. You work together in a small group of up to six people and you have to solve puzzles, clues and challenges to complete your mission within 60 minutes and escape to victory. Best thing at all is that it's open till 10 p.m. most nights. So it's a great option if you're only in town the night before you sail. Now for shopping, look no further than West Quay. But if like me, you don't consider you visited a place until you've dined out, then head to the more bohemian Oxford Street where you'll find a full gamut of trendy British bistros through to well-known high street eateries. The pick of the bunch here is Maxi's Bar and Brasserie. To uh, be honest, you can't go far wrong. And finally, if you're a lover of all things theatrical and really fancy a night in the West End, you needn't have to journey all the way to London because Southampton is home to the Mayflower Theatre. It's the largest theatre in Southern England and most of the Victorian West End shows run for a stint here. And handily, it's so big, it's quite hard to sell out. So often you can get tickets on the day. Now, if you have a little more time, then Southampton is a great gateway to the whole of Southern England. We have already mentioned, of course, that it's only 90 minutes to London, but it's even closer to the historic maritime city of Portsmouth with its beautiful dockyards and the ancient capital of England, Winchester, home, of course, to Alfred the Great, both of which are well worth a visit if you haven't been. Of course, the Isle of Wight is literally on Southampton's front doorstep and there are ferries every hour that cross over the Solent. The journey takes about 60 minutes and gives you the perfect opportunity to explore the fossil-rich coastlines and immense natural beauty of the second most populous island in England. Now, without doubt, my favourite place to visit from Southampton is the New Forest. Once a, a royal hunting ground for William the Conqueror, it's now one of the largest remaining tracts of unenclosed pasture land and forest in the south. And deer, ponies and cattle continue to roam free in its ancient heaths and woodland. Clear rivers, shady groves, and a car-free haven for walking, cycling, and horse riding. Quite simply, it's absolutely beautiful. Now, if you're out of the New Forest, then many would argue that Bewley is the star attraction. It's an award-winning family day out with something for everyone. Home to the stunning National Motor Museum, historic Bewley Abbey, World of Top Gear, and the beautiful Palace House, all of which included in one great value ticket. Another highlight of the New Forest is the 18th century village of Buckler's Hard, which lies on the banks of the Bewley River. There's a great maritime museum which traces the village's rich history building the warships for Nelson's Navy. Plus, you can also take a riverside walk through the apple orchards, which in spring are absolutely stunning. And then from Easter onwards, there's the option of a 30-minute cruise on the Bewley River itself, where you can admire the unspoilt and tranquil landscape. Now, even closer than the New Forest is the less well-known Itchen Valley Country Park. Mm. There are 440 acres of green flag, beautiful water meadows and woodland to explore. And if you have the kids with you, the Go Ape experience. A series of zip lines, rope bridges and swings that will keep any young Tarzan happy. So, hopefully we have convinced you that while Southampton is no New York, there is lots to see and lots to do in this historic part of the UK. And if you do ever hear someone say, what on earth am I going to do in Southampton, you can now point them in the right direction. Cool.
<laughs> now, of course, we've only looked at the main attractions here, which are still relatively close to Southampton. But if you think we've left anything out, then please get in touch and, of course, let us know. So how do people get in touch if they want to, then? A number of different ways you can do it. You can do it at hello at planetcruise.co.uk. You can email us. You can check us out on Facebook, Twitter. Make sure if you do go onto our YouTube channel, you subscribe. It's free to do that. We've got all other 57 episodes of Planet Cruise Week if you've got nothing to do one night. Again, if you're looking at cruises, still not sure what to book, you've got the website there that will detail 16 and a half thousand cruises on there for you. And if you still don't know what's going on, that's where we're here, give us a call. Absolutely. Now, we want to say thank you to the people that have been commenting and getting in touch over the past week. You're always free to do that and we do really value your comments, as Ben was saying there. So a big thank you, first of all, to um, Alan Fu who said, uh, we're going to be on the maiden majestic Adriatic Sea Cruise next Tuesday. Woof. Um, now, Alan, we hope you have a fantastic time and do get back in touch and let us know how it went and what you thought. But yeah, thank you for getting in touch. And also, um, we have another comment here, and this was uh, in response to our episode about Norwegian Cruise Lines. Remember yeah. we covered we did. Uh, the, the whole of Norwegian Cruise Lines, really, and kind of what they Went do, through, who they yeah. are, which was about their history. Uh, and Boat Lover got in touch and he said, just found you today, nice video, exclamation mark. I love Norwegian Cruise Lines. The new Latitudes program is awesome as well. So thank you very much. It's great to have you watching us. Hopefully you're still watching us now. It wasn't yeah. just that one episode. So get back in touch, Boat Lover, and tell us if you enjoyed this one and if you've been to Southampton and what you think about it. Uh, apart from that, thanks for watching. Thanks very much. And uh, you can tell he's from Portsmouth. Ha, ha, ha.